once the thyroid hormone is produced, it will have to go into the circulation. Now, we already discussed that thyroid is basically a lipophilic hormone. It cannot go in the circulation. So any of these peptide hormones, they will not, they can't swim. So you need a big boat to carry them. And that's why you've got three specific compounds which are there in that perspective. They are the thyroxine binding globulin, which binds to both T4 and T3. It is the most important thyroid binding globulin produced by the liver. 75% of all binding happens in TBG. Then you have albumin. Now, albumin is a big, it's like 200 times more concentration as compared to the TBG. But it has got a lower affinity as compared to that. What do you mean by affinity? Binding. So when we say affinity and capacity, what are the difference? Uh, I think it is basically, uh, how much it is basically to bind. Hmm. Uh, what is the strength of binding? So it can bind much more because he is 200 times more. He can carry more load, but the load he can't carry much because of the affinity is less. While <clears throat> TBG is a strong person who is holding on to whatever weight it can, it will not leave it. While albumin is a big molecule, huge amount of thyroid can be bound to it, but it will release it as soon as you have got its affinity is less. So it is not that much interested in keeping that amount. So it is binding mainly T3. It is there in the liver, 15% binding, but with low affinity. Now, low affinity means it is very good for delivering. Suppose you have got somebody who has got a very miser fellow. He's keeping all the money to himself. He is not giving money to anywhere. But albumin is like, it has whatever money he'll keep on giving. So this is very good. It goes in the different cells, releases thyroid in between. But when you talk about actual strong, you don't want to lose money you rely on TBG. So this is the difference between TBG and albumin in that perspective. The third one is transthyretin, which is not very relevant from a circulatory perspective. It is mainly binding T4. Its main role is in the CSF. So within the brain transport also, transthyretin is important in that regards. Now, why are we spending so much time in the binding globulin? The reason is that 99.97% of T4 and 99.7% of T3 are bound and only the free forms are active. So when you're measuring total hormones, you need to know if there are any conditions which will affect the overall thyroid functioning and then you need to be careful about that in that regards. So estrogen will increase TBG, which basically would mean that if somebody is pregnant, somebody has got OC, somebody has got SERMs, you will have high total T4 normal free T4 and normal TSH. This is what you need to understand. Testosterone and glucocorticoids, they will decrease the TBG. So what will happen in that perspective? If somebody is on testosterone and anabolic steroids, your T4 will be falsely low, FT4 will be normal and TSH will be normal. There are certain drugs like heparin, NSAIDs and some of the anti-epileptic drugs which disrupt the binding of thyroxine with the uh, binding globulin. Now, what will happen in that situation? I discussed that in the initial phase. So, it's, uh, so it's an acute release. So suppose you're given heparin for some reason, or you're taking sample, which is heparinized. That also will have the same effect. In that situation, you will have a strange situation where your everything is normal, but FT4 is very high. So if you think that is, then you have to worry about the situation in that perspective. Conditions like nephrotic syndrome, liver disease, hypoalbuminemia, malabsorption, and this is also we saw recently that elderly gentleman with liver disease who had hyponatremia and whose T4, T3 were very low and TSH was normal. So one thing you will think of central hypothyroidism, but this is actually a CBG, a, a albumin deficiency rather than a CBG deficiency in that regards. So that will have an effect. So if we compare all three, TBG is they are equal in size but the concentration is very low for TBG, very high for albumin. So albumin can bind much more thyroid, but the affinity is highest for TBG. So although albumin can bind, it will be releasing it immediately. TBG binds both T3, T4, transthyretin mainly T3, T4, albumin mainly T3, and transthyretin is important from the perspective of CSF, uh, the brain functions becomes important. 
and 75% of all TBG is strongly held by a TBG, 15% by albumin in that regards. So TBG is the major carrier. Albumin is a provider. So it will keep on providing there and transthyretin mainly in the brain will play a role in terms of binding. Now we have discussed that thyroid is not able to pass the cell membrane. So we talked about three groups of hormones. One is basically peptides. They cannot cross. So what do the, does the body, how does the body respond to peptides? So there are membrane receptors which are there. Steroids. So they don't have any extracellular receptor. They have intracellular receptors. But thyroid is a unique situation. It is a peptide, but it also has an intracellular receptor. So it has to be given a gateway, uh, a red carpet welcome, so to speak, in that regards. So this receptor is inside, thyroid is outside. So what is the clue? So body has evolved specific transporters which transport the thyroid in. So this is like if you have some big leader coming in, you will take a special calvacate and bring him inside and red carpet welcome is done. So MCT8 will take the thyroid inside and then it will start acting on the receptor. So if you have a problem in MCT8, what will happen? You have got a lot of T3 in the body, but it is not coming where it wants to work. So something like diabetes. Your glucose is very high, but your cell, the key to entry is not there. Insulin is not there, so your glucose cannot go into the cell. Similarly, you've got huge amount of T3. Your T3 levels will go up, but that T3 is not basically going to act because it cannot go inside. What will happen to T4 and TSH in this situation? <laughs> Suppressed or normal or what? What will happen to TSH? The T3 levels are very high, so it basically causing it the TSS and the... But would it enter the cells? T3 is high, but it is not entering the cell. So it is not entering, so there will be, so TSH will be very high. TSH will be on the higher side. There are some paracellular mechanism, it may go in, there are all, all is not through MCT8 only, but there will be some mechanism, but TSH will be high. So high T3, normal T4 and high TSH. This is a classical manifestation and clinical features will be the most severe patient with congenital hypothyroidism. Because even if you have worst case scenario, there will be some amount of thyroid production which will be there. So they will be the most severe because why most severe? Because even mother's thyroid cannot help them. So we talked about that mother's 40% thyroxine comes to the blood and it will save the baby. But here what is happening is that you have got thyroid no problem, it's not going into the cell. So the most severe form of hypothyroidism, quote unquote, this is not hypothyroidism in the truest sense of the word, is the MCT8 transporter defect. This has got huge mental retardation. They'll be worse than even cretin, whatever situation you can think of. So what would you do? How can you treat this situation? Hmm? You can try giving a high, high dose of. You can give very high dose of thyroxine. Anything else? And uh, MCT8. You develop an analog which can cross the membrane. So you develop a sort of a compound which is bind, which is thyroxine with something else which allows it to go through the membrane. So triac compound have been developed which causes it goes through and it will act on that. So this is a very very interesting condition. You have got too much thyroid in the body; it cannot go inside. And that is why you have got the most severe hypothyroid-like picture, which is there. And earlier people didn't know what is happening here. Is it resistance? Because people will say resistance also will have a similar picture. But then they realize that MCT8 is not there. Now, there are other transporters as well, MCT10 and OATP1C1. These are all anion transporters. So basically, thyroid is just an anion. It's got an organified iodine. That is what it is in a truest sense of the word. Tyrosine is there, but otherwise it's iodine predominantly. So these ionic transporters are defective. So there are three major transporters, MCT8, we all know, because this is the only one which is associated with a pathological condition. It's there everywhere in the body, brain, heart, liver, placenta, everywhere. MCT10 is mainly for muscle. MCT and OATPC1C1 is more for brain. MCT8 is the most important. It is involved in neuronal control and overall secretion. And I said secretion also because 
you do also need a transporter now this is again interesting because if you have don't have mct 8 then coming out will also be defective so it is not going to be easy because it will be in the cell then of course other mechanism some of it will be diffuse out so the biochemical picture is very very confusing because your t effectively your t4 is in the cells in the thyroid cells and nowhere else you have thyroid but because when the levels are very high you will have some release cell damage will happen or whatever it will cause that release will happen